now we're on the right channels at All least. Right. Put your gas pots down. Now. Am I getting another notification? There we go. Yeah, right. Spack Green at Glocker Real Estate is live in an online event, Porchcast Pottstown. You can go to Porchcast Pottstown to delete the live video if this was not the intent. <laughs> um, this time it was the intent. Uh, I may have confused some people because uh, I went live on another channel. That was to see if anyone was paying attention. Some people were paying attention because we immediately have people logged in. So they must have been waiting for us. Excellent. Thanks for tuning into Porchcast Pottstown. I have the overlay up. Just so uh, people know what it is. Just so it is. I don't see the video coming up behind that, but if that doesn't come up, I can fix that, hopefully. Is the, did you turn the camera on, Matt? It's on. Okay. It, it, for some reason, there's always something, Amy. I know. We got, we're got. we working on a new camera here, so. We are. That's yeah. a super upgraded camera. I'm hoping that the better quality camera is going to overcome the downgraded video stream. The, re the resolution, Facebook's video resolution. Yeah, I don't know why right. that's happening. Well, we'll see. Once you take the overlay down, we'll see what happens. Yeah, well, it's yeah. going to look great for me. I mean, it looks clear on the screen. It's what goes over Facebook that we can't control, right? And YouTube, for that matter. Right. But I don't see that. I don't see us behind the overlay. No, and uh, I'm going to turn the overlay off. And if we don't come up, all right, then I have Let's some. See. I have to flip some switches. Look, there it is. I just changed this the size of the oh, screen a are. little bit. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. It's still a Don't little fuzzy. Forget, a little fuzzy. A little bit. Okay. But I think we look better when we're fuzzy. It's a filter. <laughs> All the girls it's are a, using them. It's a vanity filter. Yeah. Right? I've seen some filters that are so hard that you can't even recognize who the person is. Right. It's like, all right, relax with That's that filter. Cheating. Yes, it is. Don't go over to Tinder right. and do that because eventually you have to show up. Eventually, they're going to see who is behind the curtain, Correct. right? The Wizard of Oz. Yes. <laughs> pay, no, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Ah. Uh, can we say happy one day late birthday? Yeah, my dad, Art Green. And your friend, Mark Breyer. My bestie. Yeah. 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 My brother from another mother. Excellent. Another happy of my birthdays. brothers. from a, Yeah. Happy birthday to Mark Breyer and Art Green. Another yes. of my brothers from another mother is here tonight yes. in the peanut gallery. Yes. Terry Fetterman. Terry Fetterman walking by. Came in for a beer. So we have a nice little crowd down here at Pub. We do. Lots of friendly faces that we love. Tammy William. and Phil Vontor are here. Yep. Kathleen. Brogley's here. Deb Brooke Penrod. Martin, Deb Penrod. That other lady that I know I've met her before. Her name is Kathleen <laughs> Peterson. Yes. I know I've met her before. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so, so, yeah, nice. we've come had on a good, down. There's a good little crowd. People in the peanut gallery come down to pub to help support Pottstown United Brewing Company. Yes. Remember, should... folks, the chat is open. We like comments. We like shares. We like all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. So please let us know that you're out there and that you're uh, listening. What I'm going to send say? a little shout out to everybody that um, uh, worked to get the big ginormous pothole filled on Charlotte Street. Holy <laughs> smokes. <laughs> that thing. We saw, I drove by it the other night and somebody had put the cone into it. And, and how deep was it in there? Only about a foot of the cone was oh, sticking okay. out of the hole. Here, and I know from past experience Thanks, that Jackie. traffic cones are three foot tall. Right. And so how far? It was at least two feet down into the ground. What was sticking out? Just the tip? Just the top. Just the tip. Yeah. Okay. Just the tip. Wrong mm -hmm. hole. Yeah. So I think that ventures out of pothole territory and into sinkhole territory. Crater. I mean, that yeah. is, yeah. That would be serious serious damage i hope nobody's car was to a smaller by car yeah for sure and like chris used to have a hyundai elantra and mm -hmm. they only had about an inch of travel on the front shocks as it was could you imagine hitting that with something i didn't that a buster I, axle? I avoided it right with thing? my truck and it i have a buster a, axle easy yeah okay. easy yeah would it bust an axle right 
I avoided it with my truck, and I have a big full size four wheel yeah. drive truck. I wouldn't want to hit that no. pothole. So there truck. was so somebody dropped that uh, pylon in there, which was you know give everyone the heads up. And then when I left for work yesterday morning, I saw the crew out there filling it in. So I know um, Michael Paulus. I don't know if that's his district, no. but I saw him He's on down in, in South Pottstown. Oh, okay, Pumpkin Town. So he <laughs> right? <laughs> right wasn't that so, isn't We're that taking it back? Kevin Krause told yeah, us that. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, but I know that uh, the I am Pottstown uh, folks had had um, brought that to the attention of borough council and to um, the streets department and uh, then also to PennDOT because it's a it's a state road. Yeah, so 63. Ultimately, uh, Laura Cohen yeah. is saying big thank you to state oh, rep Joe. Laura, Sarisi. I was going to get to that. I was going to get to that. So thanks for tuning in. And um, I hope, Laura, that it's OK for me to share your story. Um so maybe she's saying that Joe Cerisi had something to do with filling the pothole. Maybe he got PennDOT out there. Um, yeah, your dad says thanks for the birthday wishes. Thanks well, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna read Laura's story that she just put up this afternoon. Um, now, Laura, how do we know Laura? Laura is a friend of know her? Uh, Laura's a friend of mine. I've known for a while. She's okay. a member of our congregation. Okay. And um, she, her son, and Harrison are pretty good buddies. Okay. Um, so they went to Sunday school together. Right. And um, so I know Laura that way. Laura's really involved at the theater. Um, she's See, that's been what the, I was going for. I thought yeah. there was a Steel yeah. River connection. Yeah. So she's been in shows at Steel River. And um, the Mercury did a big story on her um, in December. Uh, she's okay. blind. And so Evan did a big feature story on her and her experience as a non-sighted person in the theater. Um, okay. And so, yeah. Is non-sighted what we're saying now? Uh, I don't know. Is that the right thing? I don't know. <laughs> so uh, I, anyway, and I will say this also about Laura. She's a wicked sense of humor. Okay. <laughs> like a wicked sense of humor. So she... Um, she shared this story about Joe Cerisi. She says, hello, family and friends. Some people talk the talk with regard to inclusion and advocating for people with disabilities, and some people really walk the walk. State Rep Joe Cerisi picked me up and drove me to his office, where he and his staff helped me navigate through the well-meaning morass called, quote, social services. Yeah. This is a daunting task for many, and particularly when blindness hampers one ability to fill out paperwork or to refer to other paperwork or to navigate sites that are not accessible as intended. Not as accessible as intended. Joe and his office spent more than two hours guiding and helping me apply for the services that's, that are appropriate for our family and its unique circumstances. Joe and I are planning to make a video in the very near future which will address these issues. I am not personally concerned so much about quote donkey or quote elephant. They both have ears which can be used for listening, which can lead to learning, which can lead to understanding, which can lead to ideas, which can lead to solutions. Thank you, Joe, Mindy, Pam, and the rest of the staff. Nice. Very nice story. Really, I really just great. think it just so happens, in my opinion, that the person, the state rep that does seems like he does the most for Pottstown has a D after his name. I agree I concur. that both D's and R's, donkeys and elephants, all have ears. Right. It just seems like our donkey listens a little bit better yes. than our elephant. Yeah, and, and like Laura says, walks the walk. So those are the kinds of things that state reps can and should be doing for Correct. people. Yeah. Uh, I know that during the pandemic, when the uh, unemployment compensation system was really yeah. overwhelmed, uh, a lot of our state rep reps were helping people to navigate that system and get some um, uh, action where they were people were falling short. Right. Um, so this is the kind of thing that a state rep should be doing. Right. Um, and it's a it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work to to run the state and run your district and then to help people individually. But this guy walks the walk and talks the talk. Yeah. And he um, has a really great staff. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that they help out people a lot. So thank you. Thank you, Joe. I this is going back some years, but I figured out how state reps could help me when I was in college. Now, it didn't help that I was studying political science. Right. But I was applying for some state jobs. And then Representative Marianne Daly yeah. helped me rewrite my resume mm -hmm. so that it matched what the state jobs were looking for. Right. And then she plugged me in. Now, this is pre like internet and Google and all of this stuff. Yeah. But then she helped me plug into the state system for applying for jobs then. Nice. I did that all at her office. Mm -hmm. I set up an appointment. 
went in there on yeah. several occasions. She helped me out. No problem. So these are all things that um, state reps can do. We talked to Mike Murphy from Veterans mm -hmm. Island Project. The state reps can help veterans yes. uh, apply for their uh, papers. Their yeah, veterans there's, benefits. There's, and, and that I'm sure can be a confusing quagmire to Absolutely. navigate as well. Yeah. To what's available and what you're eligible for. Yeah. And, uh, you know, for people like Laura, like she said, she's got a, a um, unique situation um, and uh, they helped her find what she what she needed for her and her family. So right. great. Thank you, Joe. That's accessing the system. That's mm -hmm. what the state reps office is there right. to help you out. And maybe Access some people might not even know what they they don't, don't know, know what they don't know. So well, they that's don't why I'm talking about. It. Yeah, they don't know what uh, benefits might be available. Correct. And rather than go on Facebook and bitch, you now know that you can call up their office. Don't bitch. Right. Ask for help. They'll help you out. Yeah. Like if you're not the right place to help me, can you point me in the right direction? And they will. And I would say this, too. It doesn't necessarily have to be the state rep in your area. Like if for some reason you don't feel satisfied with that person or you don't want to talk to that person. Or that person maybe is not responsive to your correct. inquiries. You can go to another state rep's office. We're not naming names. We're just saying. We're just hypothetically saying. speaking. Hypothetically speaking. Hypothetically. Well, we love Joe. And... Uh, there, I do have something in the news. I'll just share it right now. Since we're yeah, that's about a good Joe. that's a good story, and you should use that as a segue yes. as you see fit, Amy Wolf. What of Wolf Baldwin Associates? What about it? I said you. That's a good story, yeah. and you should use it as a segue as yeah. you see fit. Okay, well here it is. So Joe, I think I got a postcard in the mail um, about this. Uh, have you met Joe? Come meet Joe. Learn about local politics. Get involved. Um, this is Saturday, February 19th, from 1030 to 1230 at the Metro 100 Diner, which is the old Pottstown Diner <laughs> at the corner of King Street and Route 100. Yes. Um, so on Saturday, February 19th, he's having free volunteer training and breakfast. So if you are interested in getting involved in local politics, um, you can go have breakfast, meet Joe, and learn how you can help out. This is Joe Cerisi. This is Joe Cerisi. Sorry, we say Joe like everybody knows. This is Joe Cerisi. Give yep. those dates again. February 19th, Saturday from 1030 to 1230. Become a volunteer. Right. Learn about. So uh, politics can often, like, often feel really overwhelming. Like, what can I do to make a difference? Well, if you get involved on a hyper-local level like this, you really can make a difference. Right. So check it out and he's a super great guy and he's lots of fun so there you go joe cerisi follow his page on facebook oh look at our historian is here excellent hello todd, todd bainbridge. bainbridge how are you Bridgecast historian extraordinaire no. this is the place to be tonight man listen i'm gonna put this out there we our staff is growing by leaps and bounds um we have political liaisons <laughs> we have veterans liaisons we have a staff historian. We have a staff reporter. We have executive producer, assistant to the executive producer. Literary liaison. Literary liaison. We have a financial advisor. Right. If anyone else wants to join the staff, yes. Amy and I are taking applications. You're going to make time. maybe double what Matt and I make. I will buy your beer. Zero times two is zero. zero. However, That's... I pay in beer yeah. or cider. And, um, you know, I haven't had a cider in a long time. I might get that next. Right. Yeah. Uh, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Andrew Minostra is saying something about fibers. <laughs> I oh, like to spell fibers. fibers. We love you. I like to spell fibers and replace the F with a five. Fibers. I just I like, to, I like to do that. I see it. We do need more participation from the fibers on Porchcast Pottstown. They are a very underrepresented. We mock the fibers, group. but then they need to come on the show right? and, and defend, defend themselves. themselves. <laughs> but people that grew up in the five, some of them were actually original. Wasn't it one nine four six four back over there Correct. in back in the day? Back in the day. So the really was. old school OG. Like Todd Bainbridge. Yeah. 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 
<sighs> oh, well. Laura Cohen said she will happy to be the accessibility liaison for, for beer. beer or the or the Frenchman. What's the Laura? What's the uh, the drink that you like? The flying Frenchman or whatever it's called. Yeah, it's one of the there's, specialty drinks here. Well, there's also wasn't isn't there a mixed drink called the seventy five, which is named after the cannons that were used in World War One, the seventy five millimeter cannon. I don't know. I only ever drink two things when okay. I come here. I either have a cider or I have a vodka and soda. Gotcha. So, yeah. all right. So Laura Cohen will now be our accessibility, accessibility liaison. liaison. So if now Excellent. here's I'm going to lay out what your duties are. Um, if there are stories or items of interest that affect the uh, handy capable among us, yes, please bring them to our attention, and we will cover them here on Porch Guest Spots. Now. Right. Yeah. And I'll give you beer. It's a win-win. <laughs> it's, a win -win. it's easy. Yeah. See, oh, see really? how easy it was. Yeah, yeah. See how easy it is to get hired at Porch Guest Spots. <laughs> we are equal opportunity Just employer. What come one, come all. <laughs> All right. Andrew says he was a former fiver. He was. And then he learned the error of, of his, his ways. ways. <laughs> <laughs> so what uh, else do we have? Let's I what, do I you want to give your black history? Yeah, we have we have a pretty decent amount of people watching. Uh before I get into uh black history, we just had some people tuning in. Uh we are live at Pub. They have a pretty nice crowd here. What does it sound like? It's pretty loud here. It is. It's getting it's getting pretty crowded yeah, in here. I know. I love it. And over half of the people in here are porch donuts. <laughs> it's great. Coincidence? Coincidence? I think not. I wonder. I wonder. Uh, so come on down to Pub. They give us a four top every Thursday. Which is very so nice of them. Please support them. We went. A bunch of us went to see Adam play at uh, River oh, yeah. last weekend. That? It was really fun. It's such a cool space. It's such a cool space over at Rivet. Yeah. Um, check out their Facebook page. They have different bands and live music um, and DJs. So, and it's a really wide variety of the kinds of entertainment. Right. right? Like they've got like a hip hop night the first uh, yeah. Friday of the month, yeah, and yeah. then they've got live bands, and it, so it's really kind of all over the place. Eclectic. Yes. Uh, but it's a really cool space, and the staff is really nice, and uh, just a fun to be able to go see a live show. I, so, uh, William Paul Brogley Esquire invited me out there to go to Adam's thing, right? And Vance Jaffe wants to go to a future show coming up, right? Last week, I had taken this uh, last Saturday. You went on a little road trip, right? We left the Perona, and we went up to Bucks County. Fox and, County. Yeah. And we did this um, barn tour, historic barn tour. I saw your pictures. Really cool. We wound up at this restaurant called the Black Bass in this place called Point Pleasant, 18th century village cool. right along the Delaware Canal. Unbelievable. Like, almost thought you were in France. You know what I mean? Like, really? it had this, like, French kind of provincial Okay. What's it called? It. Point Pleasant? Point Pleasant. Yeah. The Black Bass. Okay. We ended our barn tour there. Excellent time. So was it a, a organized tour that you joined? You can go to the Bucks County uh, uh, Travel Bureau or the Bucks County Historical Society. Excuse me. The okay. Bucks County Historical Society. I'm looking at it right now. And they have different uh, routes that you can put together. So you pick the barns that you want to see. You can make a route. And it gives you a little bit of information. So it's a kind of a self-guided tour of your own. Right. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, I'm looking at some pictures, Matt. Um, it's right on the lock, or right on the canal. It is. Beautiful. That's beautiful. Cool. Worth, if you, if you were inclined. And there's a, a hotel there, too. Yes, the Black Bass has a hotel. If you are inclined to leave the perimeter, I highly, highly recommend it. I Very need nice. my travel visa to go out to Bucks County. You know me, I never go anywhere. Yeah. Actually, Levi and I are going uh, to Philly next weekend. We're going um, to spend the weekend in Philadelphia. Nice. You did that last year. We too, did do right? it last year. It was cold. Uh, but um, yeah, we're going to go back. We're going to see a show at the City Winery. Okay. Uh, and Philadelphia has a um, vaccine mandate for indoor dining. Okay. Yeah. So um, you're covered there anyway. Covered there anyway. But so Friday night, we're going to go see that show. Isaac Mizrahi is doing, he's a designer. You probably don't know who he is, but he's a designer. He's doing a cabaret show. 
and then uh, Saturday night we're having dinner with some friends. So, nice. Yeah, a little getaway, a little weekend getaway. I will say this, since it's also um, our Black History show and all of this, that, um, the uh, Museum of the American Revolution at Independence National Historical Park over the past couple of years has made yes. an increased effort to tell the story of the enslaved persons of African descent. Right. I was corrected the other day. You can't say slaves? No. Enslaved people of, of African, African descent. descent. And uh, if you want to learn more about slave history, black history, right. um, that's a beautiful yeah, place. Yeah, I've to not go. been to that museum, uh, but it's I've where heard it's... it's where I'm going to do a Pottstown thing to Philadelphia. <laughs> okay, it's where Independence National Historical Park's visitor center used to be. It's in the old visitor center. Okay. I don't know where that is anyway. Third, I know and where Market the Liberty Street. Bell is. Third and Market Street. Is it near the Liberty Bell? Yeah, it's okay. about two blocks away from the Liberty Bell. Right. Yeah, easy to find right. if you're so inclined. So let's get into this uh, Black History for today, since that's what I promised to do. Excellent. Um, most people, or a lot of people in Pottstown, especially if you're actually from the borough of Pottstown, you will know about the Ricketts Center. Sure. You've either been there. Um, attended an event there. You've heard of it. You've you, driven by it. You were a member of right. it at some point in time. When I was a kid, my mom worked there. And uh, she worked for the Head Start program. And okay. after school, my brother and I would go over to the Ricketts Center and hang out. Right, because she mom. was working. She was working time. there. Yeah. And they had plenty of stuff for kids to do. Right. So my brother and I would go over there and hang out with my mom after school. So I, growing up, spent a lot of time at the Ricketts Center. Okay. So uh, many people may or may not know that the Ricketts Center is named after a man by the name of Richard James Ricketts Jr. And uh, he was an American professional basketball and baseball player. Oh. Ricketts was the number one overall pick for the 1955 NBA draft. And he was picked by the St. Louis Hawks out of Duquesne University. Rick has played professional basketball and baseball simultaneously and retired from basketball to play baseball. He was a front runner, right? Before yeah. all of these other guys Beyond did Neon Neon and uh, yeah. Bo Jackson and all this stuff. Did so, Michael Jordan have a, a short-lived oh, career? Very, very, very short-lived short in yeah. minor league. Uh, right. Dick Ricketts was in the major league right. for both the NBA and the MLB. Incredible. So, right. Played simultaneously. Um he pitched for the St. Louis Cardinals in 1959 and had a 10-season pitching career in the MLB. He is one of 13 athletes to both play in the NBA and the MLB. Only 13. Only 13. One of them from Pottstown. Pottstown. Uh, Dick Ricketts graduated from Pottstown High School and was the son of Richard and Margaret Ricketts. He had a sister, Alice, and a brother, Dave. Dave was also a professional athlete. Mm -hmm. And after I talk a little bit more about Dick Ricketts, I'll tell you about Dave. Okay. Um, Dick was a multi-sport athlete. He played alongside his younger brother, Dave, the brothers Dick and Dave Ricketts and futures Philadelphia player, Hallie Bedell played on the Pottstown baseball team that won 48 games in a row. That's was that, that the team? Was that the team from Pumpkin Town? <laughs> Might have been. No, this was at Pottstown High School. Right, okay. So that that year, that Pottstown High School team won 48 games in a row. That is no easy feat. Oh my God! Look at that! It's a Did Fetterman. You... It's a Patty <laughs> Fetterman. Thanks for saying hello. Uh, so he played he played uh, basketball at college at Duquesne University, where he he was an All American. And then, like I said, in 1956, he was the number one overall pick for the NBA. Uh, goes on to give some more uh, pointers about who he was and some of his achievements. Uh, let's see what else. I think that pretty much hits the highlights. If you want to go and read more about his sporting highlights, you can do what I did and just go Google to Wikipedia. <laughs> yeah. And uh, there's... I mean, page after page of reference. So there's plenty of Thanks. documentation on Dick Ricketts. So how did he come to have a, a, a 
I don't want to call it a recreation center because it's more than that, but how did he come to have the Ricketts Center named after so, him? So here's what's happening. That land was owned by a church. And from my understanding, the Hill School probably had a role in this, the borough of Pottstown and the school district. That land that the Ricketts Center was set on mm -hmm. was set aside in perpetuity. There's an easement that um, makes the land only to be used for um, educational or, re or actually or, religious right. or like nonprofit. Okay. It had to work towards the benefit of the community, right. nonetheless. Right. Okay. And the church, there was a church that actually sat on that property. It was a historically black church. Mm -hmm. So I guess the concept here was that we were going to build a community center in what was then and still now a predominantly black neighborhood mm -hmm. for the benefit of the community. Right. And, you know, who the, Dick Ricketts was a prominent member of the community, mm -hmm. came from a prominent a family in the right. community. Certainly. So why not name the rec center right. after? Do you know if it was named after for him while he was still living? Yes. Or it was, okay. for, absolutely. Okay. The, the Ricketts Center was built in the early 70s, mm -hmm. and uh, Dick Ricketts did, passed away in, I think, the 2000s. He was sick okay. for a long time, and uh, he died. Oh, excuse me. He died in 1988. So definitely. Okay. So it was around. built during his lifetime. Yeah. I'm getting right. him confused with his brother, Dave. Mm -hmm. Dave died in 2008. Okay. Uh, Dave Ricketts was an American catcher and coach in Major League Baseball who played parts of six seasons with the St. Louis Cardinals and the Pittsburgh Pirates. Ricketts was a reserve catcher on the 1967 World Series champion Cardinals and their 1968 pennant winners. He later served as a longtime bullpen coach of the Cardinals uh, up until 1991, including their 1982 World Series champions, 85 and 87 pennant wins. After having been in the bullpen for the Pirates from 71 to 73, including the 1971 World Series champ. So my man was in the World Series yeah. multiple, multiple times. Yeah. Over his career, he batted 249 with one home run and 20 runs batted in in 130 games. Not bad for a pitcher. Right. From Pottstown, no less. From Pottstown. Uh, Ricketts was born in Pottstown, Pennsylvania. His older brother, Dick, was the first pick in the 1955 NBA draft. Hi, Twilight. Uh, both of these guys have retired numbers mm -hmm. in cool. both uh, their professional and their college careers. There you go, Pottstown High School, turning out some pro athletes. Pro athletes. Now, there's other pro athletes that have come out of Pottstown High School. Uh, did I tell you that I met Aaron Beasley a couple did of weeks you? ago? So he's my age. I actually used to. Yeah. Now he denies this because somehow in his head it makes him better. Um, he denies ever lifting weights, mm -hmm. but I know that I lifted weights with him in high school in the basement of the Y. Okay. Like I know that I did. Right. Aaron, it was you. Right. Now, for some reason, he claims that he never had the time. It was just that it was all just natural. natural, right? Right. Well, wait, so everybody knows the name Aaron Beasley, right? And the Beasleys right. are another prominent family in sure. town, right? There's a million of them, in, yeah. and they've been around for a long time. So uh, we were at the Blue Elephant a few weeks ago, and uh, Amy and I stopped. We went to the we went to a museum, and we stopped there for a drink. And Julian and Levi came down and joined us, and uh, Julian started chit chatting with the guy next to him. And then um, as we were leaving. Uh, we stopped again and we were talking to these guys and um, it's kind of a long story, but one of the guys wanted Levi's Hill School sweatshirt and Levi's like, I'm not giving you my sweatshirt. And uh, he's like, come on, man. I grew up like shooting hoops at the, at the Ricketts and, and we were right at the edge of the Hill School and we always, all of our, we all wanted these Hill School sweatshirts. So Levi's like, I'll tell you what, I'll give you my sweatshirt if you give me a hundred dollars, which I'm then going to donate to the foundation for Pottstown education. Okay. He was like, done. So the guy peels off a hundred, gives it to Levi. Levi takes off his sweatshirt, gives it to him. Now that guy's name was Kino. I can't remember his last Kino name. Kino Shawwell. Yeah, Kino Shawwell. Levi knew his cousin or something from uh, Rupert. And the other guy that we were t sitting next to him, uh, Amy was talking to him and he said he was a Potsdam graduate, blah, blah, blah. And Amy said, oh, what's your name? And he said, Aaron Beasley. Well, Amy and I just, it was like we met Tony Dorsett. We were like, Aaron Beasley. Oh my God, you're Aaron Beasley. 
<laughs> we, like totally have, you know, this like celebrity moment. Okay. So it's just fun. Yeah. And at the end of the day, I grew up with that. We cat. met Aaron Beasley and we've made a hundred dollars for the foundation for Pastown education. Nice. <laughs> Good story, Ames. So then I texted Joe Wurtsevich on Monday and said, Hey, I got a hundred bucks for you. Meet me in the parking lot. And I went out and gave him the hundred bucks. Yes, Ray Amori, the lights on. Uh, Ray came over to my house. Ray from the Dell Home Services um, came over to my house and fixed the light in my hallway, which okay. I had improperly wired, and that's why it wasn't working. You leave that to the professionals, Matt. I know. I Don't usually, be messing around with an electric. I'm usually pretty good with that kind of stuff. I just made a mistake this one time. So Ray Amori and his son thankfully came over Ray and came got over me out. and saved you. Everybody's yes. talking about the center. Yep. Yeah. It used to be called Bethany Center. Okay. And um, that might have been because it was named after the church that was on that lot. Was it the Bethany the Church? Could have been. I don't remember. It's that been a while sense. since I looked at that deed. Uh, I used to have a copy of that deed because I was on the advisory board for the Ricketts Center when it was being run by the Olivet Boys and Girls Club. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I managed to get a copy of the deed because we were working with the Hill School and the borough in order to make some improvements and get the borough to live up to their end of the bargain on some repairs that they were supposed to right. do there. Because the building itself, Ricketts Center, the mm -hmm. building, is owned by the borough of Pottstown. Okay. And they have promised, at, it's been a couple of years since I've been out of this, but at one point in time, they were obliged to give a certain amount of money every year to help keep the building running. Right. They're also responsible for maintenance on the building. So if something goes wrong, they're supposed to come over and fix it because the building itself belongs to the borough. The borough. The so then the, it belongs to us. Right. It, right. You and me and everybody. Um, so when a another entity comes in to run the center, like it you, was the Olivet for years, and then yeah. now it's the Boyertown multi-service? Correct. Do they pay rent or they just run it? No, it's not a rent situation. They run it and do the management of, right. the, of it. And of then the, the borough pays a certain amount of money. Now, there's probably a new contract in place, which I am not aware of the details of. Right. So I don't want to speak out of school. But uh, in the past... Uh, the organization took control of it, ran the day-to-day -day operations. Provided borough, the services. Correct. Right. All of that. Uh, we don't live in a township, Ray Amori. We live in the borough, borough of Pottstown. A township and a borough are two different types of political entities. Different governments. Two different types of Right. Government. So Upper Pottsgrove is a township. A picky, but it's Lower true. Pottsgrove is a township. Correct. Yeah. Upper, all the groves are townships. Right. North Coventry, North Coventry Township. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So they have. Boyer Town's a borough. Pennsburg is a borough. Royersford's a borough. Right. So Spring they have. City's a borough. They have borough council members. Others have commissioners, right? Yeah. Like, townships have commissioners. commissioners. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, I did something to my screen here. Did you ever do that? Like you, you press something on the computer and then you everything don't know disappears what, no oh. i made the screen too big and now i can't get over to the side where i control the overlays and stuff uh oh you so scrolled in i i scrolled in there's a kid here henry fetterman's here he might be able to I help know. you <laughs> but anyway talk amongst yourselves it's like a meeting of the no hanno here it is. i love it i love it love to see it, this it, nice crowd it's a good crowd thanks for coming down everybody yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on. You want to start talking about some stuff? Yeah, because that'll kick off some more conversation. Right. Thanks um, to the people that are tuning in. Uh, yeah. Andrew Minostra, Judy Green, Ray Amori, Laura Cohen. We've got a couple people over on YouTube. Thanks for checking us out. Appreciate yes. it. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button on YouTube. Uh, we're getting ready to get up to 150 subscribers. Yes. And I'm saying this. When we hit those milestones, there's going to be a present. Whoever's the 150th, so maybe people are going to want to not subscribe because they that. want to be. Don't do that. They want to be the 150th. Just subscribe. Get yes. your other friends to subscribe, yeah. and maybe doesn't, work with your friends to. Doesn't cost you anything. The last gift that I gave out was, it I, it went to one person. Yeah. But it was enough 
entertainment in there for four people. It's a little package. Well, yeah, so not, work it out with your buddies to not subscribe not yeah. so you can hit 150. I don't know. All right. Work it out. Uh, Steel River, speaking of Black History Month, is looking for uh, some... Um, cast members. Uh, cast members. Yeah. yeah. Now, you don't even have to be an actor, per se. No, they Just want a, people from right. the community. Right. Yeah. So they are um, presenting the show Sweat, um, which is, I, from what I understand, it is written about and takes place in Reading, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. um, so they have some very specific roles to fill. Um, there's some African-American males that they need um, for the show. So two African-American men in their 40s. That could be you, Matt. Yes, it could be. One African-American man in his 20s. That would be a stretch for you. No, I can't do that anymore. Uh, an African-American woman in her 40s to 50s. Can't do that one. Yep. Uh, <laughs> a Latino man in his 20s. White man in his 20s, white man in his 50s, and two white women in their 40s to 50s. So that's what they are looking for in order to produce this very important show. Um, it is the story of a group of friends that have spent their lives sharing drinks, secrets, and laughs together. As per everything that Steel River does, I'm sure it's going to be excellent. Yeah, it's going to so, be a good it's uh, be And a good you do show. not need to be a professional actor. You no. don't even really need to have much experience. And if you think that you're too busy, I will tell you that our friend Joe Cerisi was the star of Christmas he Carol. Was. The star. So he's running the government, and he came here and did the show, and he was the star of the show. I, so. I got to say, though, Amy, for the fact of, for the full disclosure, they did ask me to do a part, and um, I don't I don't think I can do it. Yeah. No, between, between Porchcast Pottstown, the cast at Glocker, my job, right? My friends. Because rehearsals family, are evenings. Thursdays, they practice on Thursdays. Yeah. Now I was offered a very minor role that only has like a couple of lines. Right. So maybe you wouldn't have to go to every single practice. No, I I still think it's going to be too much though. All right. Well, I would love to see you in it, but you don't want to bite off more than you can chew. No. Right. No, I don't. So I can't, I'm not going to try out for any of the major roles. My mom was really pushing that hard. I, I don't have time. Right. But I'm sure there's other people in, in Pottstown. Even the minor role that I would, they want me to try out yep. for, I gave them an alternative. There is somebody else in the community who could play that role probably better than me. Okay. Because this person I'm thinking is a professional singer and probably has a little more stage presence for that am i thinking of, of the one that you that i think you're we'll thinking talk of? later i don't want right. to i don't want to throw his you don't want to throw yeah you don't want to yeah no you don't want to put it out there yeah make any put anybody on the spot you probably know who it is though right i think so we'll talk off yeah, air off air when we got a cold mic <laughs> <laughs> all right uh not to be a buzzkill um <laughs> chris says if tyler perry can play a woman you can too <laughs> There's i'm not playing a woman <laughs> Go and I kind of agree with what Dave Chappelle had to say about they're always dressing black guys up as women in these movies. Think about it. Right. Why do they do that? I don't know. I don't know either. But I don't think I they're being of, dressed up as women against their will. No, but listen to what Dave Chappelle had to say about okay. it on Oprah's show. He got interviewed by Oprah and he talks about it. Interesting. And it, he, he was definitely there was definitely pressure there for him to do it after he told them this is not something I'm interested in doing. Okay, I will check it's that out. It does sound interesting. Um, so this is a little bit of a buzzkill. Pottstown Little League mm -hmm. not have enough players sign up. Why do you think that is? I I did look at the comments on that show or on that on post, post, and it did say that the pandemic has probably slowed down registrations. Um Anything that I would say is is just a guess. Conjecture. One of the things one of the things that I ran into when I was coaching soccer and trying to establish a club for soccer in Pottstown, um, there was a lot of objection from Pottstown families about paying registration fees. People felt like they didn't have enough money or the registration fees were too expensive. Um, so they didn't they didn't want to do it. Right. And I think a lot of modern families are just very busy. 
I was going to say that I think that people are very, very busy. I know I'm busy. I know you're busy. Um, and people are, you know, people are working hard. They're working a lot and they're busy. So unfortunately, something like that is just maybe too much of a commitment for folks. Maybe. Yeah. So anyway, um, they, it looks to me like they're going to be not having a season for Pottstown this, this year, but next year they're going to merge with Potts Grove. Correct. Right. So Pottstown. So if anybody did sign up for this year, you will get a refund. Correct. And then um, next merging. year it will be Potts Grove. Okay. Yeah. It's good. Next year it's going to be the Pottstown slash Potts Grove. Right. So I would think that maybe if you live in Pottstown and you do want to play this year, maybe you, can, I don't know. I don't so. know what would stop you from yep. doing that. I mean, my kids yeah. played soccer at Potts, Potts Grove Soccer Club right. because there was yeah, no Yeah, you don't have to be in club. that school district necessarily, I don't, right? I don't know. Yeah. See, I don't so. know the Little League rules. Well, did you pay that much attention? Uh, Harrison played Little League. He did. I remember seeing you guys oh, yeah. at the games. Yeah, he did. Played for a couple of years. Yeah. yeah. And my kids played for a couple of years, too. But I, to be honest with you, I, baseball bores the hell out of me. <laughs> And I just never paid attention to it. So I don't know what the Little League rules are or anything else. Harris got pegged with the ball an awful lot. But whatever, that's an automatic walk to first base when you get hit. <laughs> All right, coming up this weekend at Rivet, my favorite place across the street, is a band called John, uh, Blonde, James Blonde. They are from Spring City. We are unable to go, but it sounds like a really fun show. Um, it's like 8 bucks, $7 to get in. And um, live music lovers with a passion for grooving and moving. Okay. Yeah, so that sounds like a fun show. Um, that is at 8 o'clock on Saturday. I'm sorry, Friday, tomorrow. Uh, Valentine's Day is on Monday. Okay. So there's some Valentine's Day related events coming up this can I, weekend. Can I throw something out here? Throw I learned, it out there. I learned about this yesterday. And... Um, I think it's a little BS, okay. to be honest with okay. you. Okay. Okay. Throw it out there. Do you realize there's this? They're now have this thing called Galentine's Day. Yes, I don't which know. Which is the day before? I've, I've heard the Valentine's. term, but I don't know what it means. So on Galentine's Day, you're supposed to specifically do something for the girl or the woman in your life. But isn't that what Valentine's Day is already for? Maybe it's like. For, for like your girlfriends, like for like a girl's night out? No, no. That's not what that You're means? You're supposed to specifically treat your girl I, on Valentine's Day. Are yeah, you I'm sure? Getting it. Yeah, I, help me out. If, if somebody, I'm, I'm sure up. somebody oh, watching God. knows more. I just think it's a little excessive. I don't know what that Valentine's means. Valentine's Day is already a made up holiday. What is Why are Valentine's we adding Day? even more made up holidays to a made up holiday? Okay, hold on. I'm looking it up because I. Lisa Vanny saying something. Hold on. That's dumb. Uh, <laughs> dumb unless it's I a think girl's it's player. for your friends. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. I can't just. I just want a bullet point. I don't want a whole article. I just want to. Hold a on. Point. The whole. Even the fact that there would be a whole article it's is ridiculous. Ridiculous. It was from Cosmo. Um, okay. Well, it is a day in which women celebrate their female friendships. Can't you do that on that? I do that day? every single day. I am. I celebrate my girlfriends every single day. So it's kind of like, like for instance, Black History Month. Like every day is White History Day, but the black folks got the shortest freaking month. That's the, the shortest. Year. I couldn't even pick March. They picked the shortest <laughs> month. Month of the year. So, yeah, I'm with you. That's dumb. All right. It's dumb. We got but you want to go out and celebrate now. Galentine's Day? Great. Yeah. Right. All right. Um, so this Saturday at Manitani Still Works is a new wave Valentine's party. That sounds really fun. I would love to go. We have our nieces this weekend, so we're not going to ah. be going out. But this sounds fun. Manitani Still Works from 7 to 10 on Saturday a 1980s new wave Valentine's party. Oh, I'm sorry, seven to eleven, and at both locations. Where's the other Manistoli, Manitoni Still Works location? I didn't know they had a second yeah. one. See, I'm not a. I don't drink a lot of. Um, I don't drink a lot of liquor. 
except for when you come to my house and sit on the porch. Yeah, and I had I did have two bourbons the last time I was over there. But no, I don't go out and drink mixed drinks no. or liquor. It's too dangerous. Right. Only when you're at the Wolf's house. Correct. Right. And sometimes at my dad's house. Right. But um, yeah, I don't. Yeah. So I don't know. Don't that's, know where it is. Yeah, so anyway, know. that sounds fun. Uh, if somebody Saturday. wants to put up in the comment section where the other uh, Manitoni Steelworks location is, feel free to do so. Yeah. Your comments are greatly appreciated. And I'm sorry that I'm not doing a better job controlling the graphics. I have no idea what I did to the screen. What? So once I can get the controls back, I will. But it might not happen tonight. Right. That's okay. All right. I'll monitor. I'll read news and I'll monitor comments. Um, Saturday night, the 12th, uh, from 5.30 to 11.30 at the... Cosmic Art Studios at yes. Funky Place. They got that's a lot the, of events going on. Yeah, yeah, that's the old Eagles Lodge, I believe. It is the old Eagles Lodge, Ballroom on High. Correct. It and, was a, which is now a badminton. They do badminton in there. Yes, on yeah. the third floor. Yeah. Um, and it was Nashville. It was the Colonial Coffee and Tea Shop for like one minute. Okay. All How right. That there was a coin trader in there yes, for a there while was. too. Yeah. yeah. It's a huge place. The place it's is enormous. enormous. Um, so this is at Cosmic Art Studios, 310 East High Street, um, Gathering of the Art Bazaar. I don't know what that means. Vendors, music. It's like a craft bazaar. It says mum's the word, and there's a picture of a mushroom. Nah. Do with that what you will. Do with that what I you will. I don't know. I was in there. Yes, please. I'll have another beer. Uh, that should never be a question. What? Yeah, well, I, well, you'd like another beer. <laughs> Keep it coming until he passes out. All right. Um, February. Oh, okay, Gypsy Chris, thank you. 1603 East Passyunk Avenue in Philadelphia is the other Manitoni. Okay. Still works. Yep. Right. Let me see if I can yep. find And West Coin. Ray Amori says West Coin was the name of that place. It, that's exactly what it was. Right. I went in there a couple of times when I was a police officer because somebody tried to rip that guy off. Nope. But he was not having it. He figured it out every time. That man knew he was legit oh, was, an expert. But somebody was trying to sell yeah, him some, something bad or take advantage of him yeah. or you know, do something. Shut fraudulent. that right down. Nah, he yeah. knew his shiz. Uh Thursday, February 17th, uh, from 6 30 to 8, there is a Pottstown Parks and Rec public input meeting. Yes. So if you are a Potsdam member or resident, please attend to voice your opinion on the Potsdam Park system and learn more about ongoing park development projects. Uh, I don't like how when I, like when you look at the events, you can hit the more button, right, to see the full, yeah, right? But mm -hmm. it never prints out. No. It's a drag. Um, I did the best I, I sent it, I sent that to yeah, you. Yeah, but I, I, I oh, you expanded it a little from bit, your, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm a big fan of Potsdam Parks and Rec's department. No, I mean, we, we have we a lot of really very... great parks in our town, in yeah. our borough. And they have great programs yes. for kids. Like when I was growing up, they had the summer playground program, mm -hmm. which I still think they had. We maybe thought they don't anymore because COVID. I right. don't know. But for a long time, that summer playground program was free. Yes. It was grant funded. You yeah. just had to sign the kid right. up for it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and we've got Memorial Park is beautiful. And Andy and, and Mike, uh, Michael at Parks and Rec are so super helpful to us with Go Forth. Yeah. Um, really can't say enough. They are, they're really yeah. very helpful and easy to work with. So we appreciate them. Yeah. So if you're interested in the park system, what kind of changes are going on, what they're doing, you want to know when the bridge is going to get rebuilt, go down there. I don't think that has anything to do with the. Oh, you mean the the bridge inside the footbridge? Yeah, yeah. I don't know what's happening with that. There has here's, here's some grants my, and stuff that they. Were, yeah, that's what I heard yeah. too. And I would imagine that those grants probably come out from the state, from the uh, Department of Conservation and Natural Resources. Here's my here's my only really kind of negative critique about the parks recreation part. Okay. They bag some of the grass that they cut down Ooh. at Memorial Park. And I see that they dump some of it over the edge of the creek, into the bank of the creek. We shouldn't be doing that. No. That's... We shouldn't be dumping grass into the creek. That's not good. That's not a good thing to do. That does not sound uh, like a... No. No. We shouldn't be doing that. No. That's my only 
That's my only major problem. And the one year, so at one point in time, I was on the, at one point in time, Parks and Recreation used to be a joint effort between the borough and the school district. School district, district right. So because of that, they had to have a Parks and Recreation committee. I was the member at large. I was the member of the community on the Parks and Recreation Committee. Okay. And we spent a lot of time and a lot of money. It was grant money that was given to the borough in order to repair what's called the riparian buffer along Manitoni Creek. The riparian buffer is the plants and trees and grasses that grow along the bank of a stream. It protects the stream. Where does that name come from? Science. Right, riparian. Yeah, riparian. R I P. Don't ask me how to spell it. I don't. It, it's some science thing. Okay. Anyway, somebody, somebody after we spent a lot of time and effort getting that planted, decided that they were going to mow the banks of the creek, and all of those native plants and everything that got planted down there got snowed down. So those are my two only real. Beast. Other than that, I think we're very fortunate to have the Parks and Recreation Department that we do, mm -hmm. um, especially with some of the limited budgeting yes. that we experience here in the borough of Pasco. Right. So, A riparian buffer is a vegetated area near a stream, usually forested, which helps shade and partially protect the stream from the impact of adjacent land uses. Yeah. plays a key role in increasing water quality in associated streams, rivers, and lakes, thus providing environmental benefits. Yeah. Yeah. Totally true thing. That sounds like it's really important. Yeah. All right. It no, it's super important. So that oh, I see a lot of hearts. Trinita must be here. Good. I see yep, lots of hearts saying, from Trinita. We like Hello. those hearts. We like those thumbs up. There's another thing that I'm gonna do. I just haven't gotten around to it. There's this thing that I can do, it's called stars, and people will be able to put stars up during the show. Okay. If we get enough stars, Facebook will actually give us a check. All right, turn that on. Yeah, I got to I gotta get us registered. <laughs> For sure. I got to get us All registered. All right. Uh, that's Parks and Rec. It is crazy it's in here, folks. It's getting on Thursday crazy. night. crazy. Come on down to the pub down. and join the excitement. All right. Uh, what is the borough doing about swiping the streets? Sweeping. Oh, sweet, sweeping. Well, so listen, here's it, here's something that needs to be said. I agree that we probably need to bring the sweet the street sweeper, sweeper back to Pottstown. Yes. Here's here I mean this I know for a fact. There's two reasons why the street sweeper went away. Okay, name it. It was a piece of borough owned equipment right. and it costs money to maintain. Right. People decided that they didn't want to have the street sweeper because they didn't want to pay for it. Well, they guess didn't what? want their tax dollars then you see the, to go up. Yeah. Number two, if you live on a street that's getting swept, you have to move your car. And people didn't want to have to move their cars. They were and bitching and moaning about that. Correct. Right. So guess what happened to the street sweeper? Bye-bye. Bye. Right. Bye. It's called alternate side of the street parking. And they do, it, in, in they do it other in towns tons and of cities. towns, other places. Yes. So what I would say is to people who want to bring the street sweeper back, and I can give you a list of 10 reasons why we should bring it back. Get together, go to borough council. Talk to your borough council. Make your voice heard. Right. Because the people that got it shut down, that's what they did. They made and their that's voice that's why heard. we don't have yeah. it anymore. Are you happy now, street sweeper haters? <laughs> Are you happy now? Because look what we got. Yeah. This is what we got. This is what we have. Yeah. So all you got to do, let your borough council person know. Say, hey, we, we think I'm this letting is important. Them, I'm, Trinita's tuned in. I'm yeah. letting her know. Yeah. Ray Amori the one that brought that up. Ray, connect with Trinita. Get a little group together. Right. That's democracy in yep. action. Yep. I, I think we need it back. Uh, here's one thing that it does that'll do. We just talked about the environment, which is a reoccurring theme on Porchcast yeah. Pots now. We like the outdoors. The show started outside. Yeah. Um, that street sweeper will pick up 
leaves from the trees that clog up the sewer drains and trash that, uh, that yes. I mean then clogging the store the, the storm drains is a really big issue I, I was That's just gonna the, say the streets I was back up and then water goes into people's basements I was just in a neighborhood okay I'm helping and I don't want to say what neighborhood it is because the deal's not done okay there is a neighborhood in Pottstown that will very soon be getting the benefit of a rehabbed house. Nice. I was talking to a member of that neighborhood who said, we have this drain here, and every time the drain gets clogged up with leaves, it floods our basements. If we had a street sweeper, right. it could help alleviate that problem. Right. So it shouldn't really fall on the residents there. To, to have to go out and shovel the, the storm drains every time it rains. No. Right. It it's, helps if people pick up in front of their own house. That stuff then doesn't go down the street and end up in the storm drain. But they shouldn't have to go down to the corner no. and, and clear the drains. And I guess yeah. here's the yes. trade-off hey, for, for, the trade for those people, right? Yeah. They, they, they have the benefit of not having to pay any tax dollars towards, towards street sweeping. But how much money are they paying out of their pockets to clean up their wet basement when right. it floods? There's a trade-off for everything, right. folks. Right. Anyway. And do you want to talk about... I really went on a soap. You box, want to talk about I? curb appeal? Right? I Whole mean, town. trash is so noticeable. So, yeah. All right. Let me bust through the rest of this. Yep. Um, this is going into next week, Saturday the 19th. And, and again, check the Rivet website and their Facebook page for all of the great uh shows but they're doing this is the alley takeover number two so they're hooking up with the folks from the alley for like summertime drinks and stuff and they've got a uh reggae music show yeah man. that'd be fun yeah i'm on february 19th also on the 19th at my favorite place samana kids aerial yoga i love aerial yoga it's super fun um so you can take your kids down for aerial yoga on the 19th from 11 to 11 45 at samana holistic center uh, February 26th is the um, Shrek the Musical at the Potsdam High School. It is the all-district musical. And um, Joe Rusevich also wanted us to know that on Saturday, March 5th, they do are, are doing a sensory-friendly performance um, on March 5th, specially designed for individuals with autism spectrum disorders sensory sensitivities and other disabilities so if you want to take your kid to see the show but you know that they get a little um overwhelmed by yeah. a lot of activity a lot of people and a lot of noise this is the performance um environmental conditions will be modified um so the lighting will be adjusted um harsh changes in the lighting will be adjusted uh so this is a really nice thing that they're doing for kids that fall into this category um right. if you are interested in uh, being able to attend that sensory friendly show, then you can contact our friend Joe Rusevich um, at the Potsdam Foundation, Foundation for Potsdam Education, or contact the district's special education department. You can find all that information on the Potsdam um, School District website. Uh, Matt, you shared some information about uh, this prom dress like prom is going to be here before we know it yeah so this prom dress program it's actually occurring up in boyertown but mm -hmm. i did not see any restrictions on where a student could come from to right. take advantage of it right. and it's actually being run by a competitor of mine but i'm going to give them credit anyway uh, it's actually being run by uh zuber reality yep. yeah so another local realtor yeah. um they are good at what they do right i'm good at what i right. do but they are, they are running this program. And then, Amy, you can explain what the program is. You're the so, fashion person. <laughs> so this is um, held by the Boyertown Junior Women's Club, hosted by Miracles in Motion, March 5th and 6th, and March 12th and 13th. Girls in junior and senior high school are invited to come and pick up a prom dress, a purse, and or accessories at no cost. Um, they're also looking for donations. So contact Zuber Realty in uh, Boyertown if you are, if you have uh, prom items to donate. And all proceeds benefit the Boyertown post prom. That's really nice. Yeah, no kid should be kept from Without going to the prom, prom because they don't have a dress or so nothing to wear. Um, this is Mar this is uh, Pottstown Area Artist Guild. 
Art by Internet exhibit and sale. So this is in March. Uh, yeah. They are looking for artists. It's a show and sale. Um, so if you are an artist and you would like to exhibit your artwork, uh, this is an online art show. And um, entries need to be received by February 18th. So that's next week. You can go to PAG, Potsdam Area Artist Guild. Yeah. Just Google that. And um, they're really easy to find. They, they have are. a Facebook page. They're and, super uh, nice. If you get on their mailing list, they send out updates. regular yeah. e updates. Judith, yeah. Judith Williams is uh, my contact there that I know. She's great. Uh, May 1st, mark your calendars, Bach Fest and Goat Race. I've never been to the Goat Races. I never have either. I've never been to the Goat Races. And do you know that the winner of the Goat Race at Sly Fox gets the beer named after them for the next year? So the Bach beer right. is a strong lager okay. that gets released in the spring. It aged. They brewed it in the fall. It ate, This is traditional. Right okay. They brewed it in the fall. It would age in caves over the winter time. Caves. caves. And then in the spring, you roll out your Bach beer. Bach is one of the German names for goat. It's ah, the German word it. for goat. Got it. Did not know that. And it's a strong lager that's brewed in the winter time. Right. So this is why they have it in, in May spring. because then they're releasing it because it's Correct. been sitting in the caves all winter. And then the winner of the Sly Fox goat race, the winning goat, Gets Next the year's beers right. named after them. So the goats have a name. Yes. And All then right. the beer becomes that name. Got it. Yeah. Little Bach goat Little history. Bach history. It's a super traditional thing to do in Germany. Yeah. All right. Uh, April 23rd, the PTK Community Cleanup. PTK is the um, honor society at the Montgomery County That's Community College. That's what we College. figured out. With the help of Judy yeah. Green. So they've got a lot going on this spring. It's the 25th anniversary of the Montgomery County Community College Pottstown location. How they many have years? 25. Mm -hmm. I know. Right? I'm getting old. So uh, they have a lot going on. Uh, they've got their 25th anniversary celebration, which is April 21st, I believe it is. It's a Thursday. They're going to have um, all sorts of stuff all over the campus and a fireworks show that night. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We're not the only ones doing fireworks. College is doing some fireworks. Ray. Yeah. So Shania Brand is saying she loves the goat races. You and, have to go. And Ray apparently also loves the goat races, except for, for that he reasons. wants to eat them. Ray, you can't eat the goats. I think they have goat at uh, Welcome to the Avenue. They do from time that to time. That food is banging. God, dang. It is delicious. Banging. Delicious. All right. Final thing for today. Um, no, I actually have one. Oh, okay. Edgewood um, is looking for artists. Edgewood Cemetery is looking for artists for their Edgewood Eddie's Spring Art Fair and Cemetery Cleanup. That is on April 30th. If you are interested in showing your wares, um, call Bronwyn, 484-235-7875. Go to the Edgewood Cemetery Facebook page. Bronwyn's information is there. And you can sign up to be a vendor. Or if you want to just show up with a rake and gloves, you can clean up some here's weeds. here's one thing i would say to uh, if andrew monastra is still watching and i know he doesn't want to take any more responsibility for anything that he has to but there are two facebook pages for edgewood cemetery one is the correct one the official yeah and another one is some phantom page that it's got like made. previous organizers yeah. maybe if you contact Mystery. facebook you can get that other one taken down I would recommend to the people on the board at Edgewood that they contact Facebook and have the Phantom page or the old page removed. It's confusing. I have been confused by it myself. Right. See what I'm saying? I do see what you're saying. One's the current page and one's the old page. So when you go there, just make sure you're getting onto the right one. But it is confusing. Uh, and then if you have any questions, <laughs> if you have any questions, just contact a Porchtonian and yeah. we'll get you pointed in the right direction. This is very confusing. Yeah. You see what I'm saying, right? Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for that public service announcement. Yeah. Jamie Sanchez, is, she did that. It is possible. It takes a little bit of effort, yeah. but it can be done. Got it. Okay. 707. Yeah, so let me do this. And we still have a pretty good amount of people watching, and people are coming in and out of the show. 
I, listen, I'm, I'm going to, I keep saying this and saying it and saying it. And um, when people are making those comments and when they're doing the likes and everything else, I can see the amount of our watchers start to increase. Yeah, it helps our metrics. Folks. It does. So keep the comments coming, keep the likes and the shares coming. Right. It helps us spread the word about our community. Um, this is a neat program. We are fortunate, and it goes back to what you're saying about Monco being in the community for 25 years. Monco has a dual enrollment program mm -hmm. where kids from the community, not just Pottstown, but kids from all over the area, Western Montgomery County, can come and enroll in college classes high school while students. they're in high school. Yeah, yeah it's dual enrollment. Right. Um, now, Pottstown is in a lucky position with the Foundation for Pottstown Education yes. that every year some Pottstown kids, the top performing Pottstown kids, are invited to dual enrollment for free. Wow. Right? It's incredible. But really. let's just say, like, for instance, the year my son got into it, the cutoff was 16 students. Right. Let's say your kid's the 17th right. student. Right. So what does that kid do? Can they still attend? They can still do it. Okay. Any kid from any school district can do the dual enrollment. Okay. And they're taking applications now. Um, you can join us virtually on Wednesday, March 2nd from 12 to 6 to explore your student's dual enrollment journey, an information session for parents and guardians. Now, I am sure that I probably said something wrong. My mom is watching. Please correct me in the comments. Right. Um, the, the, uh, the website, again, the website for... MC3, it's a little wonky. It's mc3.edu.backslashdejourney. I don't know why these organizations well, can't. Well, that's make just the specific page for, for that, this. for dual right, enrollment. Right. But if you go to mc3.edu and hit enter, you're going to go to the it. main page for uh, the Montgomery County Community College, and then you can find the dual enrollment information. Right. It's a really great, and your your kid can graduate with almost an associate's. Like they they graduate with like fifteen or twenty credits, right? Oh, it's more than that. Yeah, uh, yeah. Andrew was almost. He was just a few credits short of being a sophomore in college when he was a senior in high school. Right. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. He had almost completed his entire right. freshman year right. when he graduated from high school. Yeah. So and it makes it makes a difference because I'm a float away, JP. What? No, that's okay. I'm gonna switch to a do you have any cider? Any cider? Yeah. Can I switch to a cider? Yes. Thank you. Amy's putting her drink oh, order in. Thank you. But anyway, this guy takes care of us. It does, it does help the kids uh, graduate sooner from high school or from college. Right. And if you think about the cost of college today, your student... I don't even, want to. Even if they have to pay for the program, the dual enrollment right. program at MC3, yeah. even if they have to pay for it, it's a fraction of the cost of a state or private Right, and college. so you knock off your gen eds, your 101s. Save right? money. And for, for kids that maybe think that they that college is not in the cards for them, this is a great program, right? Yeah. And, they'll, and they're really, really fantastic um, at Monco. Thank you. They're really fantastic at Monco um, with helping kids navigate the system. Yeah. And, and uh, if they need help, with the application or, or yeah. they, they, they just that they have all sorts of staff there. We work with a lot of, uh, Monco people, um, are, uh, on our go forth board and our, like our chair. Pe yeah. They're all fantastic. They're all amazing people. Jamie Sanchez. I will post this flyer up on Matt green at Glocker real estate after the show. I also tagged you in a link in the chat just now. So check the chat for a link that's going to take you to this information. I will post the flyer on Matt Green at Glocker Real Estate after the show. You can certainly grab it from there and share it out to any group that you are a part right. of. Um, I don't know when the enrollment period for the Pottstown uh, program is, but if you are interested in trying to find out more about mm -hmm. dual enrollment program for your 
Pottstown student who may qualify right. for the free program. We can certainly have somebody from the college come on the show. We can try. Yeah. But I would also say you could contact Joe Rusevich at yes. the Foundation for oh, Pottstown Education. As far as Education. the dual enrollment, absolutely. You can also yeah. contact the counseling office at the high school. They will be able to help yeah. you out. So this is or, available to Pottstown kids. You have to have yeah. a certain GPA. Yeah, yeah. Pottstown, the, the Pottstown kids that are eligible for the free program, there's a certain amount every year, right. and it changes every year based on the funding. The funding. Um, there's a certain amount of kids from Pottstown who are given an opportunity to do the dual enrollment program for free, right. and that gets paid for by the Foundation for Pottstown right. Education. Right. As far as I'm aware, Pottstown's the only school district in the area that has a program like that. Oh, can I just give you a little aside? Sure. So... Um, there's a, a program called um, uh, Healing uh, Healing on High Street. Is that what it's called? It's a it's a program being presented by Steel River. Uh, it's funded by um, the Health and Wellness Foundation in conjunction with Strive and Steel River. It's okay. called Healing on High Street. I think yes. it's called right. So I uh, I said I would be interested in participating in that project. And I did my interview uh, last weekend, and uh, they have like a standard set of questions about your experience in Pottstown. And uh, one of the final questions was, what do you think is Pottstown's uh, biggest hidden treasure? Like, what, is, what, do, what do you think that, that people from outside of Pottstown should know about Pottstown that's a hidden treasure? Right. Do you know what I said? Matt Green. Well, that was my second choice. <laughs> I said that the Pottstown School District is that is the is Pottstown's hidden treasure. You might be on this. And then I cried a little bit. Did you really? I did. <laughs> well, because Pottstown schools get such a bad rap. No, they do. And it's, and there's it's like cheer for the underdog. It does feel it is. good. And, in some and way. there's so much that our kids do with such a limited opportunity. And and there are things that are available, like this dual enrollment program that that other school districts don't have, or like the Center for Technical Education, the CTE, that we have right on site right things like that and and then i told the story about when harrison cried at the spelling bee and nobody teased him and no, everybody cheered him on no no they totally That's, i was there i was there because andrew was in the spelling bee that year because remember andrew and harrison are yeah. only one year yeah. apart yeah so uh yeah right? And I told that story. That's what Pottstown students are like. They didn't make fun of him. They didn't laugh him off no, the stage. They cheered everybody him back up there. was totally silent. Yep. And, and when he came back on and got the word, got everybody cheered applause. like he had just won the Super yep. Bowl. Yep. That's Pottstown. I was there. Totally so that's our that. that's our biggest hidden secret. All right. Nice. Uh, my mom is correcting me. Uh, it's called the Early College Program. Um, the, what I am talking about is from the Montgomery County Community College, the dual enrollment journey. So I think we're it's it's the same program, different yeah. lingo, uh, but we're talking about the same thing. I knew Judy Green would have to chime in. Thank you for chiming she, in. If you want to know anything about the Pottstown branch of Montgomery County Community College, contact Judy Green. It is a she will get you set up. Treasure. She will plan your classes to your triple doctorate. Right. She has it. She knows <laughs> everything. Excellent. Call her up. Yeah. She will have you enrolled in. You'll, you'll be a Rhodes Scholar by the time she's done with you. <laughs> All right, seven fifteen. Let's wrap it up. All right, I'm getting hungry. Listen, folks. Thanks for tuning in to Porchcast Pottstown. We really are trying to spread the positive word, and and we will help with constructive criticism here in the borough of Pottstown. Yes, Amy and I. Amy and I. Evan Brandt and the folks from Ion Pottstown are working on several projects to help po porch Tonians uh, participate in the process. Um, I'm excited for some of these episodes that we're going to be bringing to you. So please stay tuned. Thanks for tuning in. I am Matt Green. I am your local real estate expert. One last plug. The we buy cash, we buy houses for cash people are at an all time high with their activity. If you know somebody, you are selling yourself short. Absolutely. Tens of thousands of dollars short. If somebody in your family, somebody in your life, someone, one of your neighbors wants to sell their house, please have them call me. Do not be 
Do not be lured in by the promise of fast cash. I can get you the money just as quick as they can, and I and can more. more. I've gotten people twice as much money. Please. It's crazy. Please. Yeah. You don't Call. want to do business with somebody that advertises with a sign, ba- like nailed to a, a telephone, telephone pole. pole. <laughs> I am your local real estate expert. I can help you with residential and commercial real estate. Give me a call, Matt Green at Glocker Real Estate. Amy Wolf is the business manager over at Wolf Baldwin Associates. They are experts for instant instance in workman's compensation law. Specialists. Same thing. If you know somebody that's gotten hurt on a job, have them call Wolf Baldwin. It doesn't cost you anything. Even if you're getting your wage loss benefit and even if you're getting your medical benefit, I can almost guarantee you that your wage loss is being calculated incorrectly. 90% of the time, the wage loss is calculated incorrectly and you you are entitled to more money. And how much will it cost them to find out if they can get more money? Zero. Because with free consultation... And, and, and even even if you do hire us and we are getting 20% of, of what you make, because that's how workers' compensation works, most of the time we're getting you more than that, more than what our fee correct. is. Yeah. So you don't have to pay yeah. it. Yeah. You can, I mean, Levi is the best. Two reasons really to is. call the people on your screen if you need real estate or legal services. Yep. We really legitimately can help you get more money, period. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Take good care of you. We are PorchCast. Let's talk soon.